This is my 20 gallon long blackwater aquarium, a botanical centric ecosystem that's meant to make the fish that are living in it feel right at home. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, then you've already seen this tank over the past couple of months, but I haven't ever showed it off on the YouTube. So today I'll be going over a whole tour of what I have so far and what is to lie in the future for this tank. Now, first off, what is a blackwater aquarium? A blackwater aquarium is an aquarium that is meant to replicate the habitat of the tannin stained waters of places like the Amazon River and its tributaries, as well as rivers and streams in Asia. These places often have a low pH, low hardness, and the waters are this kind of goldish yellow color. But for many of the fish that we keep in the hobby, this is their home and where they feel most comfortable, and replicating that in an aquarium is the best way to view their natural behaviors as well as make them the healthiest that they can be. And this is all thanks to the leaves, botanicals, and wood that fall from the trees into these bodies of water that help make that habitat what it is. Papa leaves, jackfruit leaves, mahogany pods, fern fronds, and alder cones, all of which I use in this tank, are widely beneficial for an aquarium like this. Not only do all of these botanicals provide natural shelter for fish, over time, as they break down, they also provide an unbeatable substrate matter that is widely beneficial for different plants and animals. And the best part is, they also grow biofilm. Biofilm is a natural food for many fish found within these regions, and it's also a great food for shrimp. The biofilm itself and the little microfauna that live within the biofilm make up a good portion of a fish's diet that would come from those regions. And that is exactly what I have going all over this wood and all of the botanicals. And so far, you can see that many of the fish in here do peck at it from time to time, looking for a tasty treat within the biofilm. The piece of wood in here that I chose is a manzanita root. And I got lucky finding this because it was exactly 28 inches long. So it took up almost the entire length of the tank, which is really nice. I wanted to base this off of what I would think a fallen branch would look like within the Amazon that has now settled on the bottom of the riverbank and all these leaves have fallen around it and now it is a really good ecosystem and little habitat for many fish. That's the mindset that I wanted to do with this and I tried to position the branch in a way that would make it look like it was kind of natural in the way it fell and personally I think it turned out really well. Only three plants in here make up this tank. And if I were going for a true biotope inspiration, I wouldn't have used any plants at all. The truth is, there are only very few plants that come from blackwater habitats. Which is why a lot of the time when you see blackwater tanks, all they have in there are botanicals, leaves, and wood. That's it. Because in nature, there aren't really any plants that come from here. But for aesthetic purposes and the benefits of live plants, I chose three main plants in here, that being Cryptocorn Wendelli Green, Cryptropica, and the Dwarf Aquarium Lily. Now the Cryptocorn Wendelli Green is doing okay. The Cryptocorn Tropica could use some love, um, but the Dwarf Aquarium Lily is the real star of this tank and why it makes this tank uh, what it is. So about 95% of the time, the whole entire surface is covered with dwarf aquarium lily leaves and it creates this really awesome effect and ambiance because the, lily, the lilies are blocking out so much of the light that only small holes of light can filter through and it really creates this really natural looking serene and I really love it but having too many floating plants on the surface can affect the oxygen exchange which is why I did recently trim it which is why it doesn't look as full as it does. However, I'll put up a picture of what it usually looks like and it creates an awesome environment for the fish in here that do come from the lower light areas in the wild uh, due to the black water environment. And speaking of the fish in here, we have two rare types of tetra that you don't really see or kerosen, I should say, that you don't really see in the aquarium hobby but they make fantastic fish for a smaller blackwater aquarium like this, and I'll go over those right now. The first in here is the green striped pencil fish, the Nostomus marilini, and this is a fantastic pencil fish that 
is a prime example of if you take a fish and you stick it in a normal aquarium setting versus if you take that same fish and put it in a black water setting where it would come from in nature. Here are some photos of what they look like in a normal aquarium setting with bright white lighting, probably what you would see in a high-tech planted tank. And here's what they look like in an environment that mimics their natural habitat. They have this bright iridescent stripe that depending on the lighting can go from this bright green to a turquoise blue to gold to white and it just so many colors and it's just something that you won't see if you stick them in a normal aquarium and i've never heard of the species before until uh cd scapes on instagram uh introduced me to these so shout out to him uh he told me about these one time and I decided to take a gamble on them because if you look online and you search up the same name, there aren't many pictures of them that show what they actually look like. A lot of them are in bright lighting in a environment that does not mimic their natural habitat where they're going to show off their best behavior. And that is where you get this kind of bland looking fish, which is why I don't think there's enough demand for them. Uh, but once you get them in a, a tank that does mimic their natural habitat like this black water tank. They're a super stunning fish and I really hope we do get more demand for the species uh, like the other pencil fish species because it is just a mind-blowing fish when you see it in person in a tank where it will show off its best behavior. Now they are skittish in nature as you can see uh, I don't really have many opportunities to get up too close to them unless I'm very very still for a while uh, and that's how it was for the couple months I had them by themselves. Uh, I have a group of eight in here, and even in a group of eight, they were pretty skittish. Uh, most pencil fish uh, are, I would say, pretty outgoing. Uh, but for this species, I've noticed that they're more reclusive, and they definitely do need some sort of dither fish with them. Uh, but other than that, they have been a fantastic species. They eat almost anything, and they honestly, uh, most of their diet I feed them is just the biofilm that's on the botanicals and the wood. I hardly give this tank any prepared food uh, and the fish are fat and happy because they are eating uh, what they would in the wild which is their natural diet of biofilm and microfauna and they've been a really fantastic fish. Although I did notice that they could have used some dither fish so the other fish you see which is another fantastic highly underrated fish uh, that would do well in a smaller black water tank like this is the Loretto Tetra. Hyphesobricon loretoensis. This is another fantastic, fantastic species that is also not very common to find in the hobby. The first time I actually saw them in person was this past weekend where I got them and they are just another fantastic looking fish when you get them in an environment that mimics their natural habitat. And at the store, they were still pretty colorful, I'd say. Uh, they have red, black, white, yellow, uh, they're a really stunning fish, uh, but once you get them in a black water tank, which is something that I didn't even notice, is that their colors just enhance so much more. And that yellow stripe actually, uh, most of the time, uh, turns into an orange stripe, which is really amazing. And I'll have some pictures pop up as I'm talking, but they're just a super stunning tetra. Uh, they don't, they're not the most active tetra. They're not going to be like a rummy nose where they're constantly swimming around. Uh, they do kind of just hover there. Uh, which is really good for photos because they, you do get opportunities really often to get good pictures of them and again they're just a super stunning uh, fish that's highly underrated uh, they have a black belly this iridescent stripe that's either yellow or orange uh, a red tail fin and the tips of their dorsal and anal fin are also white uh, and they're just a super stunning uh, fish oh and their eye also has this kind of iridescent orange on top of it which just adds to this complete package uh, that is this really amazing tetra and they also don't get an it uh, they say under an inch uh, they get about 0 0.7 i think 0 0.75 is the biggest you'll see them uh, so they can go in these uh, smaller black water tanks like this and yeah they're just a super stunning fish i haven't had them for very long so i can't say too much about them uh, but so far i'm really glad with the choice i went with because I was looking at a couple other species of tetra for this tank, uh, but this was the first one that I actually saw in person out of the three or so that I was looking at, uh, and I'm really glad that I went with these guys.
Now the coolest fish in here actually is this, I don't even know if you would call it xanthic, uh, but it is a totally transparent looking Loretto Tetra. And at first I thought it was a different species. Uh, it was just like a bycatch in my bag, uh, but it's actually, uh, to my conclusion, I'll have to still ask some experts about this uh, because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 95% sure that this is a abnormal Loretto Tetra. And the conclusion I came to that is because the morphology of this Tetra is the same as a normal Loretto. It has the same kind of iridescent orange on the eye. And if the light hits it just right, it has a very faint yellow stripe like a normal Loretto Tetra does that you don't normally see. So literally everything except the color is the same as normal Loretto Tetra. It's just that this guy is 100% transparent. And I think that's really cool because I've never seen anything like it uh, within other Tetras. And it's just kind of cool to have this one uh, Tetra out of the group that is uh, different. And I think that's really cool. And I think that's the coolest fish within this tank. I would call this tank a self-sustaining ecosystem just based on how little I feed it. Uh, there's so much biofilm on the wood and I'm constantly adding in new botanicals as the old ones uh, start to decompose. Uh, but all the fish are fat and happy because they are again eating that natural diet of theirs. And Scott from Tannin Aquatics did this uh, experiment uh, where he added a group of green neon tetras to a tank that had no filter. I believe it had a heater, uh, but it was just not, not, nothing. Uh, it had all botanicals and all it had was biofilm and he never fed them. And I think it was a project that lasted 18 months, uh, but in that 18 months that he didn't feed them, those green neons were thriving off of that biofilm and microfauna and they're actually breathing too. So that was a perfect example of a self-sustaining ecosystem. And it's great because as the botanicals decompose, the plants get nutrition from that, the fish get nutrition and their food from the biofilm. And as long as that biofilm is constantly growing, uh, I would say the fish are pretty much set. I don't think I'd even have to give them any more food, uh, although to fatten up the new Loretto Tetras, I probably will give them some feedings of live baby brine here and there, uh, but the pencils have been going uh, at this for a couple months now, and I've only fed them probably four or five times within uh, the, say like seven months I've had them, and they're still fat and happy, and this tank has just been a joy. Uh, Blackwater tanks are some of my favorite niches within the hobby, and I can't wait to explore more ideas. I would like to upgrade this tank in the future to a bigger Blackwater tank, uh, so I have more room for other species like rubby nose tetras uh, and other stuff like that. Uh, and I do want to get one more species in here uh, as a bottom dweller. Uh, if I'm sticking with the Amazon theme, it'll probably be pygmy quarries, uh, but I'm still looking at that. Uh, and some other species that would fit in here uh, to complete this tank. And yeah, that's basically it. I hope everyone enjoys uh, this first video of 2023. Wow, it's already been one day into 2023 and I already have uh, my first video up. So I hope this is a direction I want to take for the channel uh, this year as more of a cinematic kind of relaxed style. Uh, like if you've ever seen Tank Tested or uh, Jimmy, uh, his uh, Jimmy Gimbal, his channel. Um, this is more of a direction I want to take because I really like this kind of soothing, uh, laid back direction. And yeah, I hope everyone has a really good uh, 2023. I hope you all had a good new year and hopefully we'll see more of this tank soon. Uh, and tell me what you think about this tank and what you think about this new style in the comments uh, below. And, and with that being it, this is Northwest signing out.